Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brightworks in another match of Beyond All Reason. Today we're going to be taking a look at Glacial Gap, one of those maps with a whole lot going on here, so let's get right on into it. Spawning over on the eastern side and representing the blue team is an Armada commander getting those metal extractors up, getting ready to step into this game here. We have Alex Speed coming in at 22 True Skill, representing the uh, blue team from the German side. Going to be showing us what they've got in the back lines here of the northern side of this map. Now, spawning in exactly the same position, mirrored directly across the map here, coming in at 22 True Skill. Also, uh, spawning in the back line here on the northern front, it's going to be Shadow Fire Lamb. Playing as a Cortex Commander here, going into a double, uh, no, sorry, a quadruple metal extractor, double solar panel start here before getting that lab out. I think it's probably a perfectly fine build, especially on a map like this. Although I will say, Tidal and Wind Speed, both pretty phenomenal on this map. I'd love to get some Tidal Generators going. That's something that uh, oftentimes can be very powerful as a land-based commander, is if you have some spare resources or maybe you wanna, you wanna pay for it, you can get one of your naval commanders to lend you a constructor and you can start building those Tidal Generators. Very efficient way of getting an energy economy up and running. Uh, <laughs> glacial Gap, I almost said Naval Gap. I guess you could be called that. Glacial Gap here, pretty bizarre because it has these weird pathways right down here where units can sneak on through, but you're going to need something like a hovercraft or maybe amphibious tanks in order to go along the beaches over in this area and then push through the choke points in this direction. Uh, otherwise, you're going to need crawling bots to crawl up and over and along these hills and into the back lines in that direction. A little bit of a complicated one. Same on the northern front as well here. Big open path where a whole bunch of spider bots and whatnot can crawl around all over the place and oftentimes that can be a threat to the backline economies here. Now, another uh, point of note here, we do also have the Legion Commanders enabled. I really uh, felt like people were enjoying the the Legion Commanders, the extra units, all that, all that sort of stuff turned on. We have a lot of fun with that on the live streams on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Uh, in case you'd like to tune in right here on YouTube, 12 PDT, feel free to jump on in. And uh, yeah, I felt like I'd bring some more of that here onto the YouTube channel. So let me know what you think about that down below in the comment section. But anyways, stay tuned for a whole bunch of super epic units as we get into those uh, T3 factories that can produce some of those epic Karganas, epic czars, assimilators, uh, all that really good stuff here. Not quite there yet, though. We're right here in the mid, or we're right here in the early game. We're not even into the mid game yet. Still in the early game. Dr. Lowe. Uh, not Doctor Who, Doctor Lowe, sending out a whole bunch of, uh, well, a whole bunch of reclaimed circles here. Just a single resbot, though. We do have another follow-up resbot sent out by Shadowfire Lamb as well. Both of these red resbots going to be eating up these juicy, juicy rocks and sending them back towards the red team here. Now, the blue team not making any push for those resources whatsoever, so this is actually going to go completely uncontested. That's an extra, oh, let's call it 600 or so metal going back to the red team, give or take. Definitely going to be a fabulous little eco boost right here on the front lines. Oh, and we also have the air rework enabled. That's also in the uh, the notes I have attached here. The, the uh, air rework was enabled as well. So we should see some of those interesting airplanes happening. Those extremely slow bombers. Some of those quite expensive fighters here. As we uh, take a look here. Yeah, 126, 3700 metal. Uh, energy, rather. Should be quite interesting. Wind speed is plummeting right now. Poor Soul Gamer. Caught with four wind speed, five wind speed here. Oh, and tanking still. Yeah, it's going to make those windmills pretty ineffective. At this point, you I mean, you really don't have any option but to transition to those T1 solar panels, and that could be so uncomfortable here. Groot, uh, sorry, GG Root, otherwise known as Groot. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call him Groot from the rest of this match here. The brown player for the red team. Yeah, going to be uh, caught in a similar trap right now. Wind speed is plummeting, and that means that there's a huge e-stall right here for the brown commander. At the very least, we're moving forward and claiming stuff on the naval front with the commander over here, and the hovercraft are going to be quite nice, but... Yeah, gonna be a little bit tricky here now. Fighter has made it across the map here. Now, fighters in the air rework, T1 fighters at the very least, are able to shoot down at the ground here. So this should be interesting. Maybe we're gonna be able to snipe some actual economy back here. That'd be pretty neat. Here comes the fighter. There it goes. Fires very slowly too, you might have noticed. Capable of, uh, yeah, doing some damage here, but well, they're, they're a little weird. <laughs> Definitely not the fighters you're used to. It's, uh... Very slow, I gotta say. Watching the new fighters fight definitely feels slow. One of those constructors gets shot down here, but I feel like if maybe we had sent two fighters across, that could have been a whole lot more lethal. Nicely deflected right now by Ziki Maru, the uh, Seafoam Commander here. Love that color, by the way. This is probably one of my favorite colors. Seafoam Commander here, going to be holding the bottom line with those fighters and denying any of that here. There's a couple of goons over here that could also sneak across here. Now that we've scouted where the air commander is and we've scouted that Fapanda is going all the way up to T2 immediately, it does mean that we have a perfect uh, info gathering as to exactly where and uh, where, well, yeah, where the enemy is vulnerable and when they're going to be vulnerable, right? You kind of get a glancing uh, view of the 
the tech transition and, and when that will be complete here. A couple of Hades standing defensive. And uh, Hades are pretty good, actually. All right, a lot of pings right here coming out from Zikamaru. Guess very, very uh, cognizant of the Groot, or the uh, goons rather, not the Groots. <laughs> Getting all those mixed up right now. The uh, goons pushing forward here. Two of them make it past the defenses of Sir Arthur Court and uh, make it into the back line here. And the fighters could probably shoot these down, maybe. That'd be one fun, fun use case for the fighter. Yeah, there we go. Gonna start firing away at these. A little bit weird to see fighters being used as a defensive tool, but sure, Zikamaru gonna use them to blast down those uh, goons right here. They gotta kind of be careful, right? You can have to come on at an angle and come in from a certain certain speed at a certain time, line it all up properly, but uh, certainly not impossible. There we go. Fighters cleaning up a couple of those early hovercrafts. That's, uh, I mean, when's the last time you've seen that, huh? Every work sure is one hell of a drug. Ah, the goblins are out. One of my favorite units of all time. This is absolutely got to be one of my favorites here. The goblin is a little mecha critter that wanders around, has two little arm cannons on it. Absolutely adorable, the little stinkers. They outrange the, the Cortex grunts as well, so they can uh, give those, those Cortex commanders a taste of their own medicine as far as how convenient it is to move them around with a fight command and take down entire armies without even really having to micro them. Very, very squishy though. Uh, you can see they cost virtually nothing. 25 metal, 50 energy, just barely more than a tick here. And uh, they do some really good work. They have quite a lot of range. They have quite a lot of mobility here. You can see them kiting Mean Nose uh, Commander here, the yellow commander, quite a bit here. Put, putting on a little bit of pressure, forcing that commander back off the front lines here. Mean Nose is going to need some sort of a response here. Going for the thugs, I think aggravators would probably be a little bit better. Uh, yeah, aggravators. Thought I was mixing that up with the agitator. Do that all the time. Alex B digging down a whole bunch of these forces right here for the hot pink commander and well at the very least claiming a couple of those metal extractors very difficult to hold all these metal extractors as well as the geothermal up here but if anybody can do it it's going to be the blue team leader haven't seen much out of the red team leader looks like that's because we are going all the way up to t2 starting up those t2 metal extractors starting up the uh, energy converters here starting up a whole bunch of stuff getting ready to go into a late game economy getting those t2 metal extractors up and running is top priority here though it's going to mean that we can pump out these actual uh, T2 critters a whole lot quicker. That being said, it's actually a build power issue right now. We could resolve this with a couple of construction turrets. Looks like a... Uh, oh, interesting. Looks like a builder is going to be marching forward here to claim this geothermal. Was not claimed by either of the other two commanders here, so I guess that's a good move. Making sure that it's claimed at the very least will uh, offer you quite a lot of energy income for relatively low metal cost. A couple of grunts getting caught here by an incisor and a commander. There's some wolverines firing away as well over here. Not particularly durable are the Legion units, but they do pack a wallop, and so in situations like this, just having a little bit of firepower here can mean that you shut them down quite tremendously here. Getting these LLTs up, very important, of course. A lot of these, uh, these, uh, goblins not moving, though, actually. Alex Speed and Commander Corps. Command Commander Corps. Must be French. Going for it. Is that French? I hope it's French, otherwise. I'll look like a fool. Not, not the first time that's happened. Uh, gonna be pushing forward here. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks pretty good right now. Although, I will say the thugs are hitting the battlefield, and as soon as those get out, especially with the rest bots out on the front as well, this is gonna be a whole lot harder to push into here. I love that we're handing over grunts, by the way. It looks like, uh, Dr. Dr. Cox, the, uh, purple commander, with a name to boot, sending out a whole bunch of those grunts on the early game to help, uh, yeah, build up a little bit of, a little bit, a little bit more firepower on the front lines here, but still going to be going for a T2 transition in the back line here. So quite a bit slower as far as the T2 transition goes, uh, but maybe that's not the end of the world as we are uh, getting into this match here. Obviously, the T2 economy is really what the T2 transition is all about. So if it can propagate T2 economy as quick as possible, it should be no issue whatsoever. Finally, using our metal in the back lines here, looks like the red commander is going for a T1 vehicle bay. Interesting transition here. We're going out of the T2 bots and back into T1 vehicles. I wonder what we're going to go for. Huh? Just a whole bunch of medium tanks. Okay, it can work. It's a little bit unconventional, but going for those T1 medium tanks can certainly help you stabilize the front lines. You can get a lot of units out very quickly, and especially those medium tanks can contribute a lot of HP, where otherwise there would be very little. This is effectively a two versus one right here for Alex Speed and uh, Cash Miss. Uh, X43, is that supposed to be like a play on Christmas, maybe? I'm not sure. Cash Miss X43, either way, going to be uh, holding the, well, pushing the front lines, really. Oh, those Janus missiles. Every time they connect, it takes down a unit or two. And when you have this many of them in tandem, you really start to melt away these armies. And there we go. Just like that, the entire hot pink army has been obliterated here. This is looking terrible. We need some T2 on the front line. I don't think there's T1 
medium tank transition is really going to pay for itself here. I think we need some fiends, we need some Sheldons, we need some spy bots too. This is a huge ball of T1 units that could all be paralyzed by spy bots. Will allow you to send in some fiends afterwards to clean that up. You only need about three or four fiends burning away at this and maybe even self-destructing in order to blow all this to smithereens if you can manage to EMP it. Now, a couple of uh, fiends either way are going to do phenomenally, whether it's EMP'd or not, but those Genesis certainly can provide a nice little defensive advantage. Huge ring of torpedo launchers over here on the southern side, preventing Sir Arthur Court from pushing in at this point. Fighters are pulled to deal with the Navy. Quite like it. It's going to take some time to readjust to this. I don't enable the air rework because uh, Legion can't benefit from the air rework. So as far as I'm aware, Legion, the Legion planes are essentially out of the picture here. You can't go air as Legion. Uh, just because they're not tweaked exactly the same way, they don't work exactly the same way, means that they, uh, they don't really... They don't really work. <laughs> You're essentially disabling Legion Air whenever you turn on the air rework, and sometimes the Legion Air is quite fun to play with, so oftentimes I don't do that, but it is uh, interesting to see, always. One of the things that I love about Bar is just the fact that there's so many different imaginings of how Bar works and how, uh, how it should be played here. Makes for a very dynamic game, especially when you start enabling some of these funky settings. Huge surround on this front, though. Yeah, Mino in a lot of trouble. Bunch of medium tanks accompanied by their Janices, accompanied by their Shell Shocks. Everyone and their mother has contributed to this push right here. Tremendous army coming out for Alex Speed. Has done nothing but produce units this entire time, and it leads to a tremendous army right now, as you can see. Absolutely shredding apart the entire force right here from Mino. Excellent pinch maneuver right there by the green commander and the blue commander laying on the pressure, and that down, well, that brings down the yellow commander, as well as all the defensive lines that he held so dear couple of lobbers on the front line, a light plasma bot. They're quite interesting, very squishy, but put out a tremendous amount of damage. As you can see, they throw a plasma projectile just like, uh, for instance, a thug or a mace would, but it's a little bit less uh, heavy, hits a little bit less impactfully. Apparently, we should be focusing over here, at least according to Zikamaru. I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to be looking at here, but apparently uh, the Seafoam Commander has quite an opinion as to what Fapanda is supposed to be doing. I haven't seen anything in chat, though. Uh, oh, there we go. Can you do something? Politely asks the uh, Seafoam Commander, putting his teammate on blast. Not necessarily the most helpful of uh, commendation here, just asking someone to do something. Uh, for instance, suggesting something you'd like to see done could be a little bit more productive. Destroyer count is looking all right here, but that's a lot of frigates. And if we catch these destroyers one by one... Oh no, this needs to be pulled back. This destroyer needs to be pulled back. If we catch destroyers one by one, we can bring their numbers down slowly but surely. It reduces the snowball effect quite dramatically. We can lose a destroyer for free here. That really burns. On the land-based units, you can lose a couple of tanks. You can lose a couple of bots. You can lose a couple of basically anything and still be all right. Uh, you know, obviously not ideal, but you'll be all right. On the naval field, those destroyers are like gold. You cannot get rid of them in the early game here. And losing that destroyer right there significantly reduces the firepower that's going to be coming out of the pink force here. Now, I'd love to see some frigates moved in as well. Frigates are great for concentrating firepower. You can just start to really hammer down on specific units once you have the frigates. Destroyers are much better as far as a uh, siege option goes, right? They can fire away from long range. They can do some damage in that sort of a way. Uh, but yeah, definitely not ideal for just tremendous amounts of DPS. We are up to Sheldon at this point. And they could be shelling away over here, but there's uh, no radar, it looks like. Yeah, there must not be a radar over here. I don't see one. Looks like there's no radar available for the red team. Let me switch into their vision right now, and that'll confirm it. Yeah, okay, no radar built over here. That's a little bit of a blunder. Radar jammer is built, ironically, but no radar is actually built. Uh, means that, yeah, those Sheldon are going to have a really hard time firing away at their full, full length here. Commander has a little bit of a radar signature, which I guess is what's illuminating all this, but as soon as we put a radar tower up, uh, yeah, those Sheldon are going to be firing away nonstop. It's going to be applying a lot more pressure to the blue teams up here. This is looking horrendous right now for the red team. We have T2 up on the front lines now. We have the... Oh, no, sorry. Those are T1, the Carquinos. They just look like T2. Uh, we have so many vehicles here. Now, one thing is the vehicles can't cross this path right here, so they're going to, they're going to have to go down south here. Not going to be a problem, though, because it means that basically two commanders worth of army are going to be clashing against one. Those uh, Gatling tanks firing away over here. I guess they're just called Gatlings here. Armored assault tank firing away at whatever they can. They sort of tickle away a lot of the units over here. Not ideal for dealing with those uh, heavy tanks or those medium tanks, rather. They can be all right, though. If we could see a massed up connection right here with the commander, maybe we could nuke all this back to the Stone Age and that might save the commanders over here. We're going for a T2 transition right now. Oh, no. All the build power is put into building economy right now, and the T2 transition is a little slower for it. It means... Whoops, sorry about that. It means that the uh, units right here are going to have a free walking path all the way into the yellow main base over here. Massive fight, meanwhile, with a whole bunch of medium tanks. 
Uh, I like the numbers here just a lot better for Alex B. Just the fact that we're trading out this army so much further forward on the front lines, it means that they're going to trade out quite a bit more efficiently. Now, not to understate the Sheldon, however, which have been tearing apart part of this army, at least whenever they're firing on something effectively here, which is uh, not all the time, which is well worth noting. Janus is firing in volleys. Every time they do, this army gets a little smaller for the pink commander. Down go a couple of tanks, down go a couple of bots, one by one. A sustained fight here is not the end of the world, though, for the blue commander, because he just has all the luxury in the world to just go for uh, eco on the back of this. We can just go for tech, we can go for eco. We've got a T2 constructor moving out now. We've got the uh, T2 lab up and running as well. We're going to produce some medium tanks. Don't mind that whatsoever. There's an extremely slow scout plane moving across, but it is going to, at the very least, get a nice little view of uh, exactly what's going on over here. All right. Nice little scout, at the very least, finds the base of the uh, blue, purple, green, and lavender commanders over on that side. Hovercraft meeting Navy over here. Always a tricky battle. Hovercraft are so much less... Uh, so Well, they're, they're, <laughs> they're fundamentally the same expense as Navy, but with so much less of the power here. Uh, you, you essentially expend the same resources, uh, and you're still going to ha just have less power out on the field. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now, is these halberds go up against a whole bunch of these. For what it's worth, the halberds did an excellent job. They blasted down a whole lot of these ships right here. Two, three, or maybe four of those ships have gone down, but eventually... It's not going to matter. The res subs are here. They'll be able to patch up all those ships as well as any of those res... Or res... Uh, I'm sorry. Not res bots. They'll be able to patch up any of those ships as well as any of those hovercraft that went down over here. So this is effectively an infinitely efficient trade right here for the uh, blue commander, the powder blue commander. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, quite, I like that quite a lot. I wonder why the names are all red or the numbers are all red over here. That's new. Maybe that's uh, something to do with the disparity. We do have a little bit of a jump between the disparities right here. Ah, uh, we have the <laughs> we have the scorch. I forgot about this bad boy. It's a fast flame tank. It's like uh, I mean, I guess you could compare it to the uh, compare it to the lightning tank. Similar, I suppose. Do they have an explosive? Yeah, they do have an explosive radius. Okay, so you want to self destruct these a lot, like you do with the uh, the fiends here. Quite interesting. Love this red spot, by the way. Base was ravaged in every way except for the T2 lab right now. Looks like, oh, actually, looks like Mino actually handed all that over. Everything except the lab, the lab was handed over to Dr. Lowe. Interesting. Handed it over, but didn't resign from the match. It's a bit odd. Wonder wonder what the uh, idea was there. Mammoth's going to be great for holding this defense, especially against fiends. Fiends don't really do anything against the mammoths. The mammoths are absurdly durable, and they're, uh, yeah, capable of cleaning all this up quite nicely here. Very nicely done. Flame tanks being routed around as well as necessary. Love to see that. Cortex should have access to a whole bunch of new stuff here. Yeah, so we have the flame tanks. Uh, we have the forge, which is a combat engineer. That's interesting. Uh, similar to the butler, I guess, would be the comparison right there. This must be a bit of an older game. Or I haven't played with these units a whole lot. Maybe, are these the extra units pack? Oh, maybe this is the extra units pack. Gosh, it's getting confusing at this point, huh? So many extra units packs and uh, experimental units packs and rework packs and expanded packs. <laughs> Not even mentioning the tweak units and all that sort of stuff, too. Uh, Kashmir is definitely time to step up to a T2 at this point. Looks like uh, agreeing with me here and going into the T2 lab. Finishes up here. Gonna give access to a whole bunch of these. I've never actually seen the Triton, but apparently it's a convertible boat slash tank. I don't know. Pretty cool. Reminds me of the uh, House of the Rising Sun in Command and Conquer oh, Red Alert. Was that the one that it was? Basically had these uh, had these units. Oh, 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 oh. Arm transport getting very low here. Set the mammoth down. Oh my goodness, set the mammoth down. Arm transport carrying the mammoth to its doom right here. There's a bunch of lightning tanks. Shoot that out of the sky. Uh, yeah, they had they had transforming... Uh, I, I think it was like they would turn into like walker mechs and then they would turn into boats or something like that. Um, almost as cool as the United States in that one. Uh, turning turning dolphins into weapons of war. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty epic. Certainly some creative ideas. Creative liberties at the very least were taken in that game. We need more wacky games like that. Here come more and more of those uh, torches, those flame tanks. We really should just self-destruct these. I mean, you can imagine self-destructing those in a big ball of units right there. Uh, I wanted to select one here. You can see that's the explosive radius if you self-destruct it. Uh, it's actually quite tremendous. It would actually do quite a lot of work. Probably more damage than it actually does just in its own, you know, regular here and there. Uh, okay, it looks like the old player is officially tapped out of this game on the red side no longer finds it worth playing gonna leave the uh yeah, the, well the, the hot pink and the red commanders with a little bit of a tricky situation here i think would probably be the best option right now is just to let dr low take this northern pass and then to let uh the red commander shadowfire lamb handle the southern pass 
Love that we're push pushing these mammoths out here as well. An excellent defensive option because you can uh, put them in position and then they're very difficult to deal with. Uh, lightning tank significantly better than the torch, it would appear. Maybe a bit of a staggered comparison I made earlier. They seem to fill the same role in the sense that they're quick and they do a lot of damage and they're some semi-disposable. Uh, Seems like, though, uh, the torch is quite a bit worse as far as stats go. I'm assuming that's compensated by price here, but haven't uh, haven't checked on that, so don't don't uh, don't quote me for that. Units being spammed out right here. This is a bit of a waste, unfortunately. There we go. Mammoth step forward. Those will be perfect for blasting down all this T1. Yep, Mammoths are going to take down all these centaurs quite nicely here. Centaurs with quite low range, actually. They can't really see very heads very far. Their uh, their eyesight is somewhat hindered by the the cannon mounted directly above their sockets. Lime Green Commander right here for Cyclov goes down. Cyclov goes down. A whole bunch of paladins floating right over that commander. I'm going to bring it to its knees. Exploding under the water just like Gypsy Danger. I'm gonna send, uh, yeah, at the very least, the green army back to its defensive position over here. Trying to hold the line. It's T1 versus T2. Uh, looks like we have a radar ship out, though. So I guess we're on early T2 for the Lime Green Commander, but a full-blown T2 army. We're walking right out of the defenses here. This is actually a complete victory for the Lime Green Commander, who's held this fabulously and now has all these res subs to go pick all this up. Yeah, several thousand metal, probably about, oh, maybe eight or th eight, eight, seven or eight thousand metal lining the bottom of the ocean floor right now. And altogether, not really achieving too much. Yeah, we're, we're kind of pushing back a little bit of the Navy. We're pushing back a little bit of the Eco. Uh, but all that said and done here. Those red subs are just going to be able to eat all this up, turn it into units, and eventually that's just going to be more and more effective T2 units sent back in your face. Now, we do have a couple of battleships coming out, so maybe those can help turn the tide here. We'd love to see some battleships spared on the coast as well to try and help. Always very useful to have those battleships shelling away at some of those uh, comparatively more fragile units. Gunships shooting down spider bots over here. Spiderbots trying to find a uh, way to move forward. Looks like we have a radar tower over here. That's actually quite nice. Cheeky little radar tower that's built by Soul Gamer here, who's over on the red, the red team over on the left-hand side. Going to be getting some of those T2 fighters out as well. We have some uh, torpedo bombers coming out. We could also build the Sea Clones, the AOE Seaplane Fighter. Very odd. Uh, still haven't found exactly the use case for them. I guess it's good for grouped up T1 units, I suppose. Rocket Spiders take down that uh, radar tower over there. That's quite nice. <laughs> Anti-air hovercraft's going to fire away at a lot of these T2 in tremendous volleys. Bringing them crumbling to their knees. Nicely done. An excellent use of those uh, seaplane, or those uh, anti-air hovercraft. Almost said seaplane hovercraft. That doesn't make any sense. The words have a meaning and you must abide by them. Green team, uh, or green player rather, on the blue team as well as the blue player, actually, both being famously unaggressive here. Not sure exactly why we're sparing ourselves. Is that... It's the indicator that somebody is hovering their cursor over there. That's a bit odd. <laughs> maybe the yellow commander logged out of the match or left the match or something, maybe disconnected involuntarily. Maybe I uh, rendered too harsh a judgment earlier. Either way, love the res bots patching everything up together on, on the front lines here. That's quite nice. Uh, Alex Speed, though as well as Cashmas, both getting a fabulous amount of metal reclaim right here. Slurping it up down the barrel of that gun right now, trying to, uh, yeah, keep keep pumping out units right here. And all of this, I mean, this is all just to the benefit of the blue team right here with a fabulous advantage. At this point, you're sort of left with two schools of thought. You can either go all the way up to T3, and just, just greed is absolutely uh, <laughs> abhumanly possible. Just make sure that you don't forget to produce units eventually. Uh, or you can go for a whole bunch of units of whatever tier that you're currently on. And it looks like that's currently what Alex Speed is doing here. Commander Core is still on T1, it's worth noting. A couple of T2 units could easily break all of this. I mean, even the Mammoths could break all this. Those, uh, yeah, those those Centaurs, not particularly good at holding on to, uh, or holding against big siege units like, like uh, Mammoths or Sheldon or anything like that. More Rocket Spiders heading on over. We do have a uh, long-range anti-air tower, so that's quite nice. That could actually do some work here. In case any air forces fly too close to the front lines over here, it can certainly help. Submarines. Gonna blast out a whole bunch of these uh, metal extractors as well as the T2 constructors, so that's a really nice pick. Hopefully these constructors can get to work building those metal extractors as well under the water right now. 
Looks like a nice advantage for the red team as far as the navy goes. However, remember, all that metal, or just about all that metal, went back to the green player here, who's now going to have a fabulous economy. Yeah, you can see we're pumping out ships left, right, and center here. We've got 2,000, almost 3,000 energy worth of production at this point. The blue army need only push forward right here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead, because it looks like we're teetering on the edge right now. But uh, if we pull the trigger, I think this army clashes, and it's going to go fabulously for the blue commander. There we go. Artillery shelling away at a whole bunch of these medium tanks, heavy tanks, all sorts of tanks. Banishers firing away, though, which is quite nice. They're at the very least going to contribute a lot of spikes of damage. T1 and T2 mixed composition over here for Cashmas. Going against those uh, Heat Tigers as well as Heavy Assault Tigers. One of my favorite textures in the game, by the way, this Heat Tiger. Love the little flame that spouts out of the head of it. Beautiful, beautiful looking thing. Most of the Scorpion tank, not to be confused with the uh, Scorpion defense. See a couple of these over here. Scorpion pop-up sentry turret, pop-up uh, gauss turret. Okay, you know what? I totally misread this uh, battle right here. I didn't account for the banishers, and I think that was probably what turned the tides right there, uh, at least in my mind. Those banishers absolutely ravaged the long-range plasma uh, that was built up over here, and suddenly that entire base, uh, or rather the entire forward, forward front of units has been completely dismantled. I would love to see some of those amphibious units. I really feel like the amphibious units sneaking around over onto the coast here. Once you've pushed as far forward, sending those amphibious units around the sides to harass could really be, be powerful. Commander goes down over here. We do indeed have a couple of hover tanks up in the uh, middle of this section as well, by the way. Scorpion's pretty good at dealing with those uh, lighter units because they can blast away with multiple weapons. It means they're not going to overkill by all too much here. Still, though, we're sending those tanks directly to their doom, right into the middle of this. Yeah, that whole army is going to melt those away like it's nothing. Commander Corps also trying to help right here, but suddenly there's just way too much T2 out on the field, and all that metal is being sent directly back to the uh, Hot Pink Commander, as well as the Red Commander, both of which have an excellent amount of red spots out here on the field, eating up this juicy, juicy reclaim field. Beautifully done. If I were in this position, one of the other things I would do is start eating up my T1 units. You can do that in mass, by the way, by just holding uh, left alt and then, or well, you hit E to start reclaiming, hold left alt, right click and drag, or no, sorry, left click and drag. Uh, and make sure you're hovering over whatever unit you want to do. In this case, I started hovering over this tank. And if you drag a big circle, every brute in that circle is going to be reclaimed. Uh, every of your brutes, anyway, is going to be reclaimed in that circle. Very easy way to eat up those T1 units if you no longer want to keep them on the battlefield and you want to recycle their metal back into more efficient units like uh, heavy tanks or anything like that. And we're losing a lot of these units, and we're not particularly trading them out well. Monkheads, not bad. They're sort of a jack of all jack of all trades, kind of does does every job equally well, uh, but not any one job particularly well. They have the depth charges, they have the heavy impulse launcher, they have all these different weapons that are very good at dealing with different units, different tiers, different structures, different sorts of things, uh, but definitely not as powerful as some of the other specialized T3 stuff. For instance, Razorbacks would be phenomenal right now. Uh, maybe even just a bunch of assimilators, right? We have, we have the extra units packs enabled. Yeah, okay, so we can go for assimilators, which are a much cheaper alternative to the Razorback here. 3,800 versus 2,500. Gonna let you get some of these assimilators out on the battlefield. You can also go for Marauders here if you so felt like it. Oh, or maybe some crawling drone carriers. Whatever you choose to do. Uh, I'm just not sure if Lunkheads are really the right option. I see why we're going for Lunkheads, by the way. It's, it's so that we can eventually leverage them into a naval push as well here. But we've already lost the front lines. And using that front line advantage is essentially the entire point right there. Now, granted, that was probably a misread from the blue player. Probably didn't realize exactly how many forces we're building. And that the front line was about to crumble right there. But still, uh, once that front line is gone, we need to stop the production of these hover tanks. Because they're just not really going to be able to trade out all too efficiently. Excellent push right here by the Lime Green Commander. Definitely using that metal investment that they acquired from earlier. And as long as there's no one big inefficient trade right now, I think this is going to be an easy naval victory right now. We need to keep the economy growing. We need to keep the vessels coming. We need to start producing as big a ship as possible. There is a capital ship out, and those are oftentimes one of the comeback mechanics because of how efficiently they can trade out, just because they can fire for so long out into the distance. It really, really makes those capital ships good at getting value over time here, but not particularly good at taking down specific targets, right? They're just very good at berating the shorelines and the enemy uh, enemy navies with unrelenting force. And here we go. One of them built right now for the uh, blue team here on the front lines. This wasn't resurrected, right? No, it's just being repaired right now. Uh, but yeah, you can see it firing away onto the coast here, doing a little bit of friendly fire damage too, but that's uh, pretty much to be expected. 
nothing with artillery of that range is going to not friendly fire every once in a while here. Lunkheads, I will say, for their ineptitude in many ways, they definitely have enough HP to be resilient on the front lines. Definitely hold up to the uh, scrutiny of heavy firepower here. No pun intended as these fiends start firing away at them. Maybe I misjudged the Lunkhead. Maybe I, I uh, judged it too harshly here. Certainly putting in a nice amount of damage. Also, the AoE on their attack is well worth importing. The AoE is definitely... I mean, it's doing great work against these heavy or these medium tanks here. Yeah, you know what? The AoE on that definitely redeems a lot of the uh, inferior qualities right now. Oh my goodness, we almost lost the capital ship here. I think it'll just barely survive as it retreats here. Oh, maybe not. Destroyers are firing away. Oh no, the capital ship goes down right there for the pink commander. What a blunder. Sends the capital ship to its doom. That is a tremendous mistake right there. Going to cost the, uh, yeah, the pink team or the pink player on the red team a tremendous amount of metal right there for effectively nothing. It was super, super inefficient. Not what you need when you're in this sort of behind the uh, behind the great scenario here we need some really efficient trades and that's just absolutely not going to cut it at this point torpedo bombers definitely one of those ways to be very efficient on the front lines here but getting shut down quite uh, brutally right now by a whole bunch of this t2 yeah those t2 air fighters air superiority fighters is what those are called now uh they're they're definitely or at least that's what they've described to me it's not their technical title i should clarify uh definitely quite good Hard to control though, especially with how slow those bombers are. Yeah, it can be very hard to control. Not gonna do much against this many Furies over here, or Dragon Slayers, pardon me. Yeah, that's uh, that's an impressive amount of Dragon Slayers. Those are a thousand apiece, by the way, so we're looking at a grand total of 22,000 metal worth of anti-air defenses. And for what it's worth, probably gonna be quite effective in shutting down any aerial raids that should come over and try and torpedo bomb down. Maybe a, a capital ship over here, certainly a prime target. Razorback's now out on the field, and I like that a whole lot more. Razorback's going to be a little bit less prone to... Oh my goodness, I think every single one of those shells just hit the friendly unit right there. Uh, friendly fire is what I was about to say, and was demonstrated so beautifully right there by the, uh, yeah, the blue lunkheads. We're, are we firing at our own units intentionally here? It almost feels like it. I think those lunkheads have probably done as much friendly fire damage as they have anything else. They have held the line ex expertly here, and I don't want to discredit that, but... Surely there has to be a note in there somewhere for how much damage they've inflicted to friendlies. What good is winning the war if you cost, you know, cost your cost your team everything? <laughs> Ready to sacrifice everything. We're getting into we're getting into r slash Thanos was right territory here, so maybe we'll diverge from that a little bit. Economy's coming up right now in T2. Uh, production is kind of becoming the back the back seat here as T3 is stepping into the forefront. Demons are in production here. 6,000 metal apiece. Very, very impressive. We have two different demons because there's two different things that enable demons, which is pretty funny. Uh, I believe it's the extra units as well as the uh, experimental units. If I have that correct. I've lost track of it at this point. Play around in the advanced settings. By the way, in case you're curious about that, play around in the advanced settings. It's where all these settings are. Um, there's, there's a bunch of different tabs, but you'll see all sorts of different stuff. Advanced units, extra units back. Um, all, all that good stuff. A little, little muddled together in this match just because of the nature of, yeah, having them all turned on at the same time can be a little bit confusing here. Razorbacks with a pretty good catch. Yeah, I like that quite a lot. A lot of Banishers getting blasted down here, but you know what? Those Banishers are more resilient than I thought. And again, the Lunkheads shooting their own friends in the back. My goodness. Not liking how much damage these Lunkheads have done. Are they really worth it at this point? Marauder have been built. Oh, I would love to see some Marauder moving through the ocean right here. You don't need many of them. You need like five or so Marauder to break through these defenses and punch well into the defensive line back here. I mean, you can imagine Marauder coming through uh, under the sea. Under the sea. Uh, sorry, I will never be able to, to say that without thinking of the... Without breaking into musical number, as is the Disney princess inside of us all. Uh, yeah, sending some Marauder down in this direction. Sorry, way off topic there. Uh, Marauders down in this direction to assault the bases down south. Definitely going to relieve some of the air pressure that the air player for the blue team is dealing with. Going to open up a lot of opportunities over here. We're just building up more and more economy. Uh, we've, wow, we've got a lot of energy converters, but no fusion reactors. Maybe we're going to build one and then the other here. Feels a little suboptimal, but I guess it works. Eventually it'll work, right? Fusion reactors are the energy production that you need for the energy converters. They don't really do very much when they don't have energy. Rail Spiders right here, locked in the most awkward battle I think I've seen in a good long while. Finally, a Strider is here to break the stalemate. Marauders instead are going to be sent up north here. There is a Demon. Demon can clean up all these Marauders and more. 
Mammoth's also quite good at cleaning all this up. Yeah, I think this is very well held. No chance that these Marauders ever see the back lines here. Mammoth are extremely good against Marauders. Marauders obviously able to just run by the Mammoths, but when you have this many of them built in tandem and all firing at the same exact time, basically exactly where you want them. Yeah, that's going to shut down those, uh, those, those, gosh, what are they called? Marauders. Quite easily here. These Scorpion tanks are not cheap, and we have lost so many of them on the front lines here. I guess they've traded out all right, semi-efficiently here, but they're just not going to be able to hold up, especially into the T3 era here. I don't think those Scorpion tanks are worth producing at this point. Yeah, T3 gantry starts up, and I think that's probably a better idea. At this point, we're on two fusion reactor economy. We've got six energy converters all churning out metal here. I think probably the uh, T3 gantry is going to be the best bet. Naval battle looking stupendous right now for the uh, green team. We do have some of those epic serpents on the front lines. I guess the epic units also enable the epic, uh, the epic naval units here, which I'd forgotten about. Serpents, very, very powerful. Epic serpents, even more powerful. They fire multiple uh, advanced torpedoes. So the, the same ones that the serpents fire, except uh, they fire a whole bunch of them. I think they fire five of them or something like that. They have, I don't know, they have torpedo launchers all over their body and they can just, uh, yeah, they can detach them and fire away. Uh, like crazy, we also have an Elsa out here. Gonna be quite good. Gorgon floating around over here, trying to uh, find whatever he can. Wow, Gorgon's actually doing a lot of damage. Oh, actually, I had no idea Gorgon's did that much damage. That's quite nice. Gorgon's gonna do tremendously. Anti-air uh, hovercraft float a little too close here. Wow, yeah, that was really nice. All right. Epic, uh, epic serpents firing away right here. Love to see it. Yeah, I mean, they're blasting apart everything. They can fire so many torpedoes so quickly and do so much damage. Uh, they're actually, they're actually doing some serious work right now. They do have to be facing the right direction, which is a bit of a bummer. Eating the corpse of one of them. Quite expensive, I will say. 15,000 to field one of those bad boys. Definitely a very, very expensive unit to put out on the field. The, uh, epic skater is also very potent as well. It can fire at a lot of the ships just as effectively as it can fire at a whole lot of the, uh, uh, the, un well, underwater stuff, the submersible stuff. Very good unit. Whole bunch of heat tanks with the assistance of some of these demons have broken through. Alex Speed in a whole lot of trouble. Guess we have a pinpointer because those are some accurate heat lasers right there as they burst through. Again, tank's not going to be able to come over this uh, hill right here, but it's not going to matter. There's plenty of grunt spam behind all this to clean out this game. Definitely looks like the red player is intending to win it at this point. Shadowfire Lamb trying to close out the match. We've got triple Aphis economy with plenty of energy converters. We're starting up, uh, well, not really a whole lot, actually. We're just going into a whole bunch of T1 and T2 spam. Don't mind it, though. Most of this uh, is being funded by Reclamation right here. You can see completely full on metal and just feeding a whole bunch of it back to the red team right here. Excellent push across the northern front, but the southern side is crumbling quickly. A lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of everything, pretty much. Buccaneers pushing forward right now. The uh, Cortex Cruiser going to be shutting down those uh, epic serpents here. Despite how epic they are, they just can't handle this many units right here. More stuff beats less stuff, as the age-old adage goes. A couple of Elsa trying to make a little break for it. And actually, they sneak past the majority of the units over here. Oh, a little bit of a Marauder run by. Just like I was talking about, they do manage to break through over here. Nuclear bombers were trying to shut this down. Those Marauder do an excellent job of popping the economy right here for Groot, who is now going to be evaporating into thin mist as the Marauders tear apart everything that he's so new and loved. Marauder's also going to be shooting that bomber out of the sky slowly, but very, very surely. A lot of T1 solar panels back here. Death to the T1 solar panel, I say. This is a absolutely game-winning move right here. Now, this uh, northern side is not looking fabulous. I have to admit, they're not they're not inspiring tremendous confidence right now. Epic grunts are out, and they're basically uh, Razorbacks on steroids. They fire their little laser beams super duper quick. I'm not sure if they're better than Razorbacks, actually. It's a bit of a weird comparison because they do exactly the same thing as a Razorback, but a little bit differently. I don't know. The Razorback seems to acquire targets a little bit quicker, which is certainly a benefit. Uh, just like that, the naval battle is won. The Marauder have swept through on the southern side. The boats have pushed through right down the middle of the lane. T3 units were in progress here. Looks like we had a Juggernaut coming out at this point. 
Uh, and in fact, there we go. We lose all of the production over here as well. The fusion reactors pop. It's going to mean that the... Yeah, or at least the Marauders cleaned up by the nuclear bomb over here. This is a uh, this is a pretty impressive back and forth. Yeah, I gotta say, Buccaneers shutting down a whole lot over here. I think they'll eventually be cleaned up by the forces sent out by Matume, the orange player here on the seas. Still has a tremendous amount of title generators, but certainly taking a, a I mean, serious, serious hit from those, uh, yeah, from all those Marauders and Buccaneers. Are we using this? Are, uh, we might have we might have forgotten that this is not an anti nuke. <laughs> that or it's being used for the nuclear bombers. I suppose that was probably an unintended uh, positive benefit is that those uh, bombers were being repaired on that pad, but a little bit odd. LRPCs over here not able to fire at this point because there's no energy production whatsoever for solar. Well, I shouldn't say no energy production. These constructors obviously produce a little bit of energy. Maybe that's not obvious, actually. How many of you knew that the constructors produced energy? Raise your hand. Mammoth slowly pushing up this hill. Uh, Mammoth singular. The rest of them are waiting to see what it sees. Like, eh, how many, how many T3 are on that side? Maybe we'll wait until we can determine whether that's a, a winnable fight or not. So this grunt spam has been wonderful up until now. And I think at exactly this moment, those grunts are being shut down with uh, perfect efficiency or near perfect efficiency. And so this is exactly when you got to look back and start turning it off. A epic bulwark built over here. That's actually a nice little uh, safeguard against any Marauder that would be pushing through. We also have some shielding over here. Nice uh, forethought right now by the Red Commander. Yeah, making sure that uh, at the very least going to be protected from some of the, the common disturbances here. Capital ships, certainly. Marauders running by just as well. LRVCs will have the uh, energy to fire at this point as the Soul Gamer has been given a couple of, uh, or a single advanced fusion reactor over here. Is there a constructor? There is a constructor. It's going into an air lab. Going to be tricky to rebuild at this point. But uh, yeah, the blue team has complete aerial authority at this point. No reason they shouldn't just close out this game right now with a big old bombing run. They have complete control over the airspace. There's uh, no other air production right now for the red team. Would love to... Pardon me. They would love to see that coming up right here for any of these players. Uh, we do have an air constructor here. Do we have a... Oh yeah, we do have an air lab. Okay, nice. Dr. Lowe realizes that. He says, hey, wait a second. We've, uh, we've got a... Gotta keep our airspace clear here, so building those fighters is lovely to see. Mammoth's blasting down some of these uh, epic grunts as well as the demon. I think those are going to have more than enough DPS, though, to eventually oh, burn those down. My goodness, the demon does a lot of damage, doesn't it? Especially when you get that flanking bonus involved as well. It really starts to burn through things. Does it do friendly fire is the question. I'm inclined to answer yes. I feel like I feel like the answer has got to be yes. Maybe, maybe not. Actually, maybe it doesn't do friendly fire. <laughs> Huge ball of scorpion tanks right there. A little bit of a uh, little bit of a drawing right there from our blue blue commander, trying to coordinate the push right here. Sounds like an epic, epic czar. Yeah, there it is. Firing its nuclear cannon shells. Let me get a look at all these Razorbacks and Thors in tandem. As well as this Epic Czar. Hope we get a hope we get a close up of it shooting really soon. What's, his, what's the range on this bad boy? Oh yeah, we should see it any time now. Here's the battle from a uh, up high up high view. <laughs> My goodness, that thing blasting away T3 units as if they were T1. Absolutely ridiculous, the damage that thing puts out. 25,000 metal for one of these Thors here, so certainly very, very costly. 25,000 versus the 9,000 to make a Thor, so yeah, you can see it's stripping away that Thor pretty quickly here. 52 down to 38. My goodness, that's some firepower. I want another, another shot of this firing away at the Thor. That is a, that is a butte right there. EMP missiles are charged. Not going to use them, though. Unfortunate. Yeah, that Epic Czar might be enough to push back this front line. Tell you what, that thing is putting out a huge amount of effort on the front lines. 22 kills to this bad boy's name. Just about every time it fires, it's going to get at least one kill, if not a couple. 
case in point. <laughs> Just killed about five different things right there, which is pretty epic. Love it as a way to break all these T3 units that are so, so difficult to crack right there. Certainly the Thor is one of the most difficult ones to kill. And this, uh, this guy has killed about four of them at this point, I think. Very, very nice on the front lines to have this churning out DPS here. So what is the holdup right now on the green commander? Feels like we are so far ahead in the naval field right now and not sending hardly anything across to do some damage over here. Damn near killed the orange commander, and maybe it's just because we felt like we killed the orange commander that we didn't actually end up pushing far enough forward right now. Maybe that was the idea, like not, a, not enough scouting back here. Let's see. Well, I mean, we saw that the labs are up and running. We saw the title generators. Yeah, I think the I think the, the blue team should be well aware of the fact that the orange commander is not out of this game yet. Still, just building a mass over here. These are all paladins, so you know, not the not the sturdiest force known to mankind, but certainly powerful. We'd love to see some constructors handed over to your other naval friend, by the way. No reason not to. Looks like a uh, oh, looks like the juggernaut was eventually produced right here by the uh, pink commander, or at the very least, a juggernaut was produced right here by the pink commander. Quite nice. Oh, shuriken's being sent out. Okay, sure. It can. Never mind. Standing still. Yeah, those grunts are going to be able to shoot upwards towards those shuriken. So it's not exactly like they're a foolproof plan. My goodness, that Razorback was at more than half health. And that thing just bursted it down in a single shot. My god, those epic czars are powerful. What a beast. Absolutely beastly unit. Oh, come on. Tactical BJ. Love that name. We're going to be we're gonna be going for Shivas. We have all this diversity in our uh, in our laboratory here you can be going for epic epic termites imagine 20 epic termites walking along this cliffside right here whoa, whoa, whoa. bob up and down the uh, terrain right here <laughs> imagine imagine 10 epic termites walking along this hillside right here and then eventually into the back base right here how would they stop it i think the answer is just that they absolutely wouldn't oh this is gonna be so juicy boom <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Every time that czar fires, man, what a what a treat. Got to move forward right now. What? Why aren't we? If we win this battle, then we just set up a big facility right here, and we just send units. We just send a whole bunch of amphibious units in this direction. We're we're really uh, throwing our lead right now in the naval field. I feel like. Same goes for over here, by the way. Completely uncontested air, and we haven't done a single bombing run. Feels like there's, I mean, there's a handful of fighters. There's 33 fighters over here. Shouldn't be too hard to outproduce that many fighters. We already have, uh, I mean, what is this? We exclude those and uh, exclude any that might be over here. Yeah, there we go. 63 fighters. I mean, we can just pull all these and kill all the fighters of our opponent right here. Finally, the trigger is pulled for all these units. You have the res subs too, so you might as well just send those in. You know you're going to get a decent trade at the very least. My goodness, this is expensive. Buccaneers have broken the line. Anti-airboat was also included here, so that's quite nice. Shooting down all those drones that are being filled in by this uh, Haven drone carrier. And there we go. Just like that, we've shut off the entire production base for the orange player. Just gotta pop those construction turrets here. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. <laughs> are we going to target them? Target the converter, there we go. Converter pops, takes down all the build power right there. Shuts off effectively production for the orange player. Just like that, you've done it. And we gotta go get this res, uh, res material over here. The, uh, yeah, the orange commander's beating you to it right now. I don't know how to call this one. Such a drastic shift between these two, but it seems like, uh, yeah, there's just, there's, there's a lack of, uh, a lack of killer instinct here. It feels like we're, we're sort of teetering on the edge of a victory for either one of these teams, but neither one can figure out exactly the appropriate way to break through this. Looks like all the T3 defenses are down right now as well. We have a couple of these pop-up turrets, uh, both the T1 and T2 pop-up turrets right here. Should be absolutely no issue for a bunch of Shiva that are pushing through. Those uh, Scorpion pop-up turrets, they're very, very good against single heavy targets, but we're doing exactly the right thing. We're sending grunts in uh, to cover. We're sending the Shiva with their rockets forward. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a dead defense right here. Bastion is coming up. Energy defense weapon. Very sturdy, to say the least. 
excellent for dealing with uh, big big single targets. Somewhere between a Bulwark and a uh, Pulsar, which is great. Love that for Legion, that they're getting sort of their own in-betweens. In-betweens or otherwise uniquenesses. And here we go. Just like that, this entire thing is blown to smithereens. Hover tank's obviously not going to do too much. Epic Recluse is built over here. Funny thing about the Epic Recluse, it actually has an EMP radius when it dies. I don't think it has, like, an EMP weapon or anything. Yeah, it's just a weird, weird, uh, random fact. <laughs> Not sure exactly why, but, it, yeah, it EMPs everything in a big circle around it when it dies. Uh, Epic Recluse, by the way, extremely underwhelming. Yeah, it fires, what was that, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, six or so rockets. It is abysmal. It is absolutely abysmal. For 7,500 metal, you get something that is just, like, a, a really, really terrible version of a catapult. I guess the catapult's like 9,000 metal, right? Uh, no, the catapult's 4,000 metal. So, for for nearly double the cost, well, not quite double the cost, 1.6 1, 1. the cost of a catapult, you get a, I mean, you get that. <laughs> not even a crazy EMP either. Just, yeah, just terrible, man. That thing definitely needs to be reworked, re-looked at. But we have bounce everything enabled. Looks like those uh, rockets weren't weren't penetrating the shields. Doesn't matter. All the energy converters were destroyed over here by the AOE from those uh, attacks splashing off over there. Juggernaut also trying its best to uh, push forward here. Czar now rolling forward. 25,000 versus 29,000. Almost an even fight between the Epic Czar and the Juggernaut, which is pretty insane. I guess when the extra units get enabled, you uh, finally get some units that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Juggernaut. Love the battle between a demon and a juggernaut right there. Makes this look absolutely out of scale. <laughs> Epic recluses as well, looking just ridiculously out of scale for the fact that they, uh, yeah, they do look like regular recluses, but obviously they're like three times the size or something like it. Shurikens flying over. Okay. Park them over here. Sure. Those, uh, those energy converters have never been more paralyzed. Not quite sure what the plan is there. Czar rolls uh, one one inch further. Oh, there's some of those tanks. Ooh, and there goes some of those tanks. <laughs> uh, so do these have like a? There's not like a button to convert them. So I'm I'm assuming as soon as they just like roll onto the water, they would convert. Meatball is out here. Love the meatball. Absolute sweetie heart. Just uh, sorry, cutie pie and sweetie sweetheart. So that was trying to compare, combine right there. Down it goes. Reduced to atoms. Absolutely precious unit right there. Meanwhile, this has been swept away completely. Destroyers have well well put into their place the uh, orange commander. As well as the, lime, the light pink commander. It looks like the uh, capital ships also eradicated the majority of the base over here. I guess I missed that. Normally I'd go back, but we're about... We're almost an hour into this replay, and I don't particularly want to watch the whole thing again yeah <laughs> one of those things that the engineers behind starcraft 2 did that uh, apparently took a tremendous amount of effort was adding a rewind button uh, maybe one day when bar is a fully funded and you know studiotized game a boy can dream can't he suffice it to say uh finally some nuclear bombers went across the map here and delivered a lethal payload to the back line very nicely done energy converters do pop takes down large chunk of the economy right here for Dan D, the uh, pink commander here on the red team. Epic, epic bulwark holding the lines as well as it can, but there's just nothing you can do against that much naval firepower over here. What an epic push right here at the very end, sending the red team on their final all-in, but I just don't think there's going to be anything that they can do against the onslaught of forces here, the economic backbone that is the red team here, or the blue team here. Yeah, just keep sending nuclear bombers. I think that's probably the right idea. Probably not. I mean, preferably preferably not into the anti-air, but, you know, do what you got to do. <laughs> it's got to be some of the best upgraded anti-air turrets known to mankind. Yeah, we have a gold star general right here who shot down more nuclear bombers than uh, have even been produced, have ever been produced even. I 
think this is uh, I think this is nearing rapidly the end of this match right here. Oh my goodness, stop sending those nuclear bombers into the anti-air. There's no reason you shouldn't have just built up four of those nuclear bombers and sent them over to end this game. <laughs> I wonder if the nuclear bombers are uh, tweaked as, at all, the same as the uh, the other bombers are. Oh, the Aphis. The Aphis. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, man. We may be mere moments away from an ending, but it feels like we're prolonging the inevitable, playing with our food right now. Finally gonna send some bombers across. They are not target fired though. My goodness, finish the game. <laughs> just finish the game. Landing the bombers in the enemy base. Just, just feels like BM at this point. Feels like we're just saying, you know what? I'm going to park these nuclear bombers in your base and there's nothing you can do about it. Finally deploying some actual missiles over here. Oh my goodness. There we go. Atomic bombs connect with the advanced fusion reactors here. Gonna mean that Dr. Lowe is the last commander remaining on the front here, sending it forward. Uh, the last one who hasn't resigned anyways. Eventually they did pop the economy over here, so kudos to them I suppose. The, uh, the red team that is in their final last moment push right there, but uh, man. That was a, uh, that was a crazy, crazy drawn out match. But beyond all reason, Dr. Lowe, I believe the final commander right here. Yeah, absolutely the final commander for the red team. Cortex, or sorry, Legion commanders without their cloak here, firing away its missiles, but it will go down and bring us to the conclusion that I think we all saw coming here of this game. Blue team managing to claim victory right here over the red. An excellent and valiant push towards the end right there. If only it had happened just about 15 minutes or so sooner, maybe the tides of this game could have shifted ever so differently in the fates of the red team. Excellent push right there on the Navy. Love the back and forth right there. A little bit of an experience all over the place. And I guess maybe I'm being a little too overcritical of what is uh, effectively a, a, new, a newer, newer commander lobby here. So apologies for that if maybe I'm being a little too harsh. But other than that, sure hope you enjoyed. Whoops. Uh, this match and beyond a reason. I've closed the game. So uh, welcome to the start screen. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>